the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. But what you do with seasons is what determines whether you will go far or you will remain where you are. Is God teaching someone now? So a quick recap that there are three levels and three kinds of relationships. Number one is what? General relationships. Your interaction with your environment every day. Number two, seasonal relationships. Number three, the highest level of relationship and this is the one that lasts throughout the lifetime of your destiny. They are called destiny or covenant relationships. Please write it down. Destiny or covenant relationships. Hmm. What are these relationships? They are relationships that have a role to play in your life all through your lifetime. For as long as you are alive, those relationships should remain and these are the relationships that you should pay any price under god to maintain because something about the overall picture of your destiny is connected to those relationships is god speaking to someone an example of destiny relationships is your prophetic connection an example of destiny relationships your relationship with your parents an example of destiny relationships your relationship with your spouse your relationship with your children and then your relationship with strategic friends connections mentors that god brings to your life what betides a man who does not invest in destiny relationships you may never be able to actualize destiny I want to say something respectfully speaking when you see people in old age isolated frustrated with no help whatsoever some of them will give excuses like i didn't have the opportunity to go to school i'm sorry but i disagree it does not take education to invest in relationships it takes honor discernment and humility how can god give you a gift of 40 years 30 years 50 years and there is nobody on earth who found you relevant enough to connect with you for destiny you must be a dangerous person then someone somewhere should like you enough and be willing to say i believe in you and i see you an advantage to my life this place is quiet I'm sure God is speaking to you now because some of you are about to destroy destiny relationships some of you that classmate you met is not just a classmate there is something connected to destiny for some of you this ministry that God brought you is not just an option just because you are it is destiny connection now let me show you what happens when we do not discern destiny relationships are you ready genesis 13 let's continue from where we left off we'll start from verse 7 remember the story god called abraham and lot went with him god prospered abraham and god prospered lot who went with him but something started happening pay attention to my message now the spirit of god is speaking there was a strife between the headmen of abraham of adam's cattle of abraham's cattle 
and the headman of Lord's cattle. Can you imagine? Both the one who carried the promise and the covenant and the one who followed became so blessed. But with every blessing and with every lifting, there are always issues. The Bible says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Next verse. Verse 8 says, And Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife. Please follow carefully. I pray thee between me and thee. He said, I'm between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. Why? For we be brethren. Verse 9. He said, It's not the whole land before thee. Separate yourself. Ah. Now there is a problem. You know what Abraham was telling Lot? It seems like now you don't even know why God blessed you. Because you followed me. You partook of the grace upon my life. Now you have increased and you did not mentor and train your people to know why God blessed them. That it was a destiny connection that brought the blessing. Let there be no strife. Go. He said separate yourself. You never allow this to happen over destiny relationships this may happen for general relationships this may happen for seasonal relationships but when it has to do with destiny relationships swallow your pride because we are about to learn a lesson from lot now are you ready please give it to us separate yourself abraham told lot i pray thee from me if thou will take the left hand i will go to the right or if thou will depart to the right, I will take the left. Abraham was telling him, it does not matter the location. What is on me will sort me out. But you choose any direction and go. Now watch the foolishness of Lot. Which is the foolishness of many people on earth today. God has brought you to this camp to give you wisdom for destiny. The Bible says, and Lot lifted his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered where before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the garden of Eden, as thou comest unto Zohar. Hey. Then Lot shows him all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves one from the other now follow carefully abraham dwelt in the land of canaan where did lord go to help me lord dwelt in the city of the plain and pitched his tent towards sodom this is what separation from destiny relationships can bring the first decision that lord will be taking outside of that relationship landed him in Sodom can I tell you this there are relationships God brought you to because he knows that if you take certain decisions without those relationships what happened to your father will still happen to you God brought you to certain relationships as a covenant binding so that you can be a partaker of certain blessings that are on men this is true. Lot went unfortunately to Sodom. Question. By the time Abraham came to rescue Lot, where did he find Lot? He did not find him at the gate of Sodom. Lot had moved in, moved in, and he was at the center of Sodom. Even though he remained a righteous man, but there was still trouble. Because if you are righteous and your environment is polluted, you will still suffer it. Is someone learning? God connected you to a friend. That friend was the one who helps you pray. That friend was the one who helps you fast. Every time you are backsliding, God will show that friend in a dream. And you say, my brother, I had this dream. I just noticed that. Is, is there something wrong with your spiritual life? Let me tell you what Satan does to people when he wants to destroy them please look up and learn the first thing satan does when he wants to attack your destiny 
is to look for everybody who can help you when you are down he will create trouble between you and them so that all of them will leave you when you are alone in pride he will now attack you because anybody who can help you there is no peace between you for the rescue this is how people die and this is how people are destroyed satan will never attack you when he knows you are surrounded by destiny relationships the first thing he will do is to surround you with wrong people or take away good people from your life lord would have said abraham i know there is strife between my people and your people please let me talk to them i can't let you go because i remember what i was and where i was before god brought me to you i believe it's a destiny connection my apologies let me work on it only god knows what else would have learned about lot destiny relationships there are doors today that have been opened in my life to my life as a person and in ministry because of destiny strategic destiny relationships and by the privilege of god's grace god has used me through destiny connections to also open doors for others many of you here respectfully are about to get crash your life because you don't have value for anybody you have a narrative in your life i don't need anybody to hell with you you can go be careful who you are driving away from your life you may drive one man that is equal to the next 10 years of your peace go and find out what happened to the disciples when they ran away from jesus jesus is not the kind of person you run away from but they ran away and within 72 hours their whole life scattered peter that was gaining relevance in 72 hours peter went back to fishing and was wasting his time there when jesus came in john 21 he said little children have you any catch he didn't even know it was jesus he said cast your net to the right side when he casted his net as soon as jesus returned to his life in one statement he caught fish that he had been struggling and he did not catch is someone learning before i continue please lay your hand on your head and say lord give me the discernment to know the relationships that my destiny depend on lay your hands on your head and pray grant me that grace so that i don't use foolishness or pride or lack of discernment and destroy valuable relationships that can hold the key to many 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 chapters of my life hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly i'll read a scripture and i will show you how to maintain destiny relationships and will be done genesis 21 For someone when your life changes and people ask you you will tell them i came for this student congress and i found something i found a key hallelujah now for sake of time i will save you a lot of details genesis 21 let's start from verse 8. this was a story between abraham and his wife sarah and a maid called hagar the mother of ishmael please follow very carefully let's start from verse 8. now speaking about remember when sarah could not bear a child 
are we together now abraham now had a child with hagar and the bible says something that hagar was sarah's maid but the moment she had a child and she saw that she was now in a position of advantage something began to happen she started mocking and acting funny towards sarah and in anger sarah banished her and said go abraham said you can do with her whatever you want so this is a story you are about to learn verse 8 very quickly and the child grew and was weaned and abraham made a feast the same day that isaac was weaned uh-huh and sarah saw the son of hagar the egyptian now god had given her, her own which was born unto abraham he said wherefore she said unto abraham verse 10 cast out this born woman and her son for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son even with isaac verse 11 and the thing was very grievous in abraham's sight because of his son now watch this and god said to abraham let not it be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the born woman in all that sarah had said unto thee hearken to her voice for isaac shall be thy seed shall thy seed be called for in isaac shall thy seed be called he says and also the son of the born woman i will make a nation because he is thy seed and abraham rose up early in the morning watch this now and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto hagar putting it on her shoulder and the child uh -huh, and sent her away and she departed and did what wandered in the wilderness she came to that house as a maid by reason of all that happened regardless what happened god lifted her and sorted her now she separated and wandered around the wilderness even to beersheba next verse the bible says and when the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs uh -huh, and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off as it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept now the lesson begins and god heard the voice of the lad and the angel of god called to hagar out of heaven and said what ailed thee hagar fear not for god has heard the voice of the lad where he is now watch this he said arise lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand for i will make him a great nation verse 19 and god opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink next verse and the bible says and god was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and he became an archer and he dwelt in all of that and all of that now when you read that scripture let me tell you what i'm trying to pull out the bible said something very instructive that both hagar and the baby two of them were crying but the bible says when god had he had only the voice of the baby the bible never said he had the voice of sarah of um, hagar how come she was crying and the baby was crying and only the voice of one child went to heaven you know why because even though she was in rebellion she had left her maid that baby that came out of her was still connected to that blessing by covenant and because of that covenant god could not deny the child even though the mother of the child was in rebellion he cried she cried god only had the voice of one child notice god did not even say anything to solve her problem why are you crying hold the child i want to speak about the child and that's it how can i be crying and a baby is crying and god hears the, the cry of the child and comes and acts as if i'm not there gave her water 
and now focus on speaking about the child because he was connected to Abraham this is very powerful write this down please how to build lasting destiny relationships I'll only give you two keys how do I build lasting destiny relationships number one I wrote here usually God uses the various phases and stages of your life he uses geographic locations he uses church and other occasions to connect you to these relationships that means destiny relationships happen in our lives primarily by taking advantage of the phases and the stages in your life for instance school now within that three four five six period year period of school there are certain people that god will bring in your life and among them there will be destiny relationships god can also use your geographic location where you are domiciled god can use your church like many of you now there was no other way you would have met and known yourselves but for this platform god can also use other occasions and connect you to these relationships now let me tell you this when you want to build destiny relationships i wrote here you must be driven you must all be driven by similar foundational values about god and about life it's impossible to build strategic destiny relationships until you are driven by similar values about God and about life the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 can two work together except they be agreed the word agreed there means compatible similar in the foundational understandings that they have you cannot join yourself to people who do not have you don't agree as far as foundational values are concerned you may define other areas but not about god and not about life is someone learning that means before you know who is what being a destiny connection to you you must have values that govern your life values about god when people are lawless and they don't live by values they don't even know who is worth their life or who is not worth it you will open up your heart the bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city that is without walls a city without walls is one that is open for anyone arm robbers animals whatever they just flood into your life let me wrap up this teaching quickly by giving you six keys to help you maintain there's a difference between building and maintaining for building destiny relationships you must have foundational values and ensure that those who come into your life have consistent or similar values as touching the things of god and touching the matters of life and destiny and then i told you that god uses the various faces and stages of our lives alongside our geographic location and any other occasion to bring these people to our lives but now the most important lesson i want you to get in this session is how to maintain destiny relationships we are going to learn from the mistake of lot learn from the mistake of hagar learn from the mistake of the early apostles before they were reconnected back to jesus otherwise they would never be apostles in the first place six lessons are you ready how to maintain destiny relationships and connections number one rise above competitive jealousy you want to maintain destiny relationships you must make sure the success of the other party does not threaten you rise above competitive jealousy i'll give you two scriptures very quickly proverbs 14 30 sorry i'm going to be rushing 
so that we can finish on time proverbs 14 verse 30 and then proverbs 27 and verse 4 proverbs 14 30 says a sound heart is the tree of life but envy is the rottenness of the bones proverbs 27 and verse 4 27 and verse 4 proverbs proverbs 24 please help us media okay just write it down for sake of time so that um write it down you can always go and read it so that we we conserve time hallelujah so rise above competitive jealousy for scripture reference proverbs 14 30 proverbs 27 and verse 4 all right it says wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envy is that dangerous number two avoid evil speaking and backbiting you want to maintain all relationships but especially destiny relationships avoid evil speaking and avoid backbiting write for reference proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 the bible talks about six things that the lord hates a heart that devises evil one that sows the seed of discord all of these things god hates proverbs 6 16 to 19 another scripture romans 16 and verse 17 romans 16 and verse 17 romans 16 and verse 17 he said now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which we have learned and avoid them is it in your bible so when you become one who is given to evil speaking and backbiting the bible says to avoid you it may be the reason why some of us don't have friends there is no lasting relationship in your life the lifespan of any relationship in your life is two weeks after two weeks you've gone to say something to tear down people and they say no 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 this person the next time another person wants to come they will advise that person and say be careful with this lady be careful with this gentleman yes he prays in tongues but he can tear you with envy and tear you down with evil speaking i forbid that over your life in the name of jesus titus chapter 3 and verse 2 avoid evil speaking avoid backbiting titus chapter 3 and verse 2 the bible says to speak evil of no man and to be no brawlers but only provoked and he thinketh no evil rise above offense number four am i right on that the fourth key if you want to maintain strategic destiny relationships practice forgiveness and tolerance write it down please practice forgiveness and tolerance a man and his wife one time were quarreling they had a misunderstanding they were about 12 13 years in marriage and when they met the counselor the woman was crying and she said from the day she got married she had never found joy that she's never been happy and the man looked with shock on his face and said so all the laughter and the joy the trips the travels what happened that you're saying you've never been happy and the counselor told them he said that's how women talk she doesn't mean what she's saying she just means i am offended right now and the way she interpreted her offense is to say from the day i got married i've never found joy and peace in this house and the man stood there shocked wondering all the birthday gifts anniversaries travels and all the time she said you are the best thing that happened to me what suddenly changed that you're saying from the day you got married <laughs> Uh, 
I said that to teach you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Let me teach you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness means to pardon a default. When you forgive, you bring pardon to an individual because of a default. But when you tolerate, you create a system of accommodation to manage a limitation that will happen again and again and again. Are you seeing the difference now? You need both forgiveness and tolerance. Remember how many times we go to God and say, Lord, just bless me and I will never disturb you again. God is not forgiving you. He has tol he's tolerating you because he knows you are coming back again for sure. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pre kate kale kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.